This is my 1980 Pook Maxi moped, and in this video, I'm transforming it from a non-running garage queen that's way past its prime to a modern two-stroke powerhouse. Now, if you've watched my channel from the beginning, you would know that I've been upgrading and modifying this bike for over five years, and I've made videos on just about every aftermarket modification you can do. Well, all except for one very important one that ended up being the downfall of the bike and the reason why it's been sitting in the corner of the garage for over a year collecting dust. And I know what you're wondering, what could have caused this? Out of the countless modifications I've made to this bike, the one thing I never touched was the internals of the engine. And it turns out that after four years of pushing way more power than this engine was made to handle, they gave out. And that brings us to the point of this video. I'm gonna tear down this bike completely, rebuild the engine from the ground up, and get it ready to push more power and be more reliable than it ever has before. So sit back, relax, and join me on this adventure to build the ultimate two-stroke moped. First thing we need to do is get this moped on the workbench and figure out what's wrong with it. Guys, my moped has not been running for a long time now and it's starting to eat at me, you know? I need to get this thing back running. I was riding it one day and the engine just kind of cut out on me, but I have a suspicion that the top end is blown up. I want this moped back running, okay? It's been sitting here for long enough, so I'm really hoping that we can figure out what the problem is and hopefully build it up so that it's nice, makes a lot of power, put it back on here, and finally finish this bike. It's been in like a half-finished form for forever. The wires are just so gross. That's just bad news. I mean, what is What's that? I don't even know what that is. It looks fine. Try and get this piston off of here. See if we can get a better look. Top end doesn't look that bad, but either way, really, I needed to pull this off. And one thing that's for sure is that this bearing right here is just solid. <laughs> like it's not doing anything in there, which is not good. I thought that had a needle bearing in it, but I guess not. Maybe that's the reason, who knows? So it turns out that on the stock crankshaft for a lot of these older mopeds, they actually use a brass bushing instead of a needle bearing to connect the piston. And as you can imagine, this is a major weak point. When you push more power through these two strokes, the RPMs get higher and higher, creating more more and more heat and these old-fashioned bushings just do not allow for enough lubrication to put up with that so mine unfortunately got too hot and seized which means it's finally time to tear into the depths of this engine and replace all of the weak stock components with new aftermarket ones that are meant to handle way more power so the first step in this build is gonna be tearing the bike down completely taking everything off stripping it to its frame and starting from a clean slate With the engine now out, I decided to tear into it to see what I was dealing with. This 
this was as far as I could get tearing down the stator side because both of the flywheel pullers I had were the wrong thread pitch. That's gonna have to wait for me to order a new one. I got the clutch in here, which I need to use a clutch puller for. Having the right tools is literally the best thing in the world. Just being able to go to the toolbox, grab what you need. There's a sneaky little woodruff key on the clutch side of the crankshaft, so don't forget to take that out and don't lose it. So until the new flywheel puller comes, I'm basically stuck here and we're going to have to move on. For now, I decided to focus on tearing down the rest of the bike and getting it to its frame. The original wiring on this bike is atrocious and I definitely want to redo it before I build it all back up. Dang, that thing was full, man. It's 2024, guys, and just like everyone else, I got a lot of goals for this upcoming year, including getting this moped running. But juggling them all from my full-time job to YouTube to even my personal goals can get really overwhelming really fast. The best way for me to deal with all the stress that comes from those goals is just to talk to somebody about it. And stress management is actually something that therapy can really help with. So if you haven't guessed by now, the sponsor of today's video is BetterHelp. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and way less intimidating for 
for a lot of people. What makes BetterHelp different is you can actually have your own therapy sessions as a phone call, a voice chat, or even just messaging. Really just whatever is the most comfortable form of therapy for you. And they actually hooked me up with my own link if you're interested in the top of the description. BetterHelp can pair you up with one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location. And when you first get started, you'll fill out a questionnaire that asks questions about what kind of challenges you're going through and your preferences in terms of what type of therapist you'd like. And in most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist in just 48 hours. You can schedule your therapy sessions at the best time that works for you. And if you feel like your therapist is not the best match, you can request a new one at no additional charge, no questions asked. So if you want to join the over 4 million people that have used BetterHelp to live a healthier, happier life, go ahead and click the link in the description, betterhelp.com forward slash True Stroke J, and you can get started there. Using the link in the description helps the channel out, and it'll also help you get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can get connected to a therapist and try it out. So with that being said, let's get back to the video. The engine has been avoiding confrontation, hiding from me because I didn't have the right tools until now. So let's tear this thing down completely, get it cleaned, and build it back up. Everything's off now, and it's time to remove the bolts and split the cases. <sighs> Yum. This thing is basically ready for the cases to be split and cleaned up. I was gonna go ahead and wire this bike up first and then get to the engine, but I decided that I think it'd be best if I rebuilt the engine first, got it in the bike, made sure it was running with just the minimal wiring first, and then wire everything else up for lights. Once the engine's on there, I'll be able to run wires around it and know where I need to route everything. So first things first, we're gonna split this case and get this thing as clean as possible before we start rebuilding it. Big impact driver screw, just to get these giant bolts out. Ooh, they do not want to turn. Oh my God, dude, these are the hardest bolts I've ever tried to take out. No shot. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, dude. Some of these are ridiculous, man. I guess it's been since 1980, it's been buried in that hole, so that makes sense. Oh my gosh, dude, my hand is literally gonna bleed from this. What to do, what to do. Oh my gosh, finally! Somewhere, boys. Hey. Nice. So this is what I love about these engines. I've actually never taken one apart, but it's literally just a crankshaft with two bearings, and then there's a main drive gear with two bearings. And then you got a couple oil seals in here, but that's literally it. It's a crankshaft and one gear. The crankshaft goes to the clutch, the clutch catches, spins this gear, which makes the bike run. It's one of the most simple engines I think I've ever seen, and they seem to be really easy to take apart and put back together with new stuff, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these out of here and get to cleaning these cases. So here you can see really well the reason why the engine failed was this copper bushing right here seized and the piston could not move freely. Right here, the engine cases are pretty much as clean as I think I'm gonna get them. I'm not really gonna polish them or anything crazy. This is a moped at the end of the day. So this is the bottom case of the engine and this hole right here is actually the drain plug. It's almost like completely torn out. There's no threads in here. So this thing like always had a slow leak of oil because I couldn't tighten down the drain plug. So what I'm gonna do, I got a drill bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole out. I'm gonna tap it for M10 by 1.25 and then hopefully I can use this screw as the new drain plug and we won't be leaking anymore. That's the goal. So as I just explained, the drain plugs on these mopeds are notorious for stripping out and leaking, so this is my fix for that.
So here what I'm doing is a process called case matching. Basically the goal is to test fit the top end kit and make sure that all the ports on the bottom end actually match with the ones on the top end. And here all I'm doing is making sure that the cylinder gasket actually matches the ports. So after cutting the cylinder gasket as precisely as possible, you can line it up on the case and use a sharpie to mark out where you need to match. And then you basically just use a Dremel to grind away the metal and make sure that the transfer from the cylinder kit to the bottom end is as smooth as possible. After case matching these last night, I think we're basically ready to unbox the rest of the stuff that's gonna be put in this build and start assembling the motor. I mean, I don't know what else I can do. I retapped the drain bolt. I case matched to the cylinder here. I think we're good to go. We got all the hardware right here. We got the gaskets. We're gonna be using Melosi reeds on a Treatland 70cc kit with a Treatland high compression 70cc head, new crankshaft, new bearings, new seals, new fuel line, new hardware. This thing is gonna be brand new. Only thing I'm keeping is the cases so that's awesome the e50 the one speed engine it's so simple i think basically i just need to press the bearings on this crankshaft get the seals in place and then you can just drop everything in first time i've ever done anything like this but i don't think it'll be too difficult based on my experience in the past so let's get it so to start off i had to use a variety of bearing coolers to remove all the old bearings from the drive gear And I pretty much reinstalled all the new bearings using a hydraulic press and some assembly lube. And now the new crankshaft and main gear have all new bearings, all new oil seals, and are ready to go in the bottom end. And I'm just using a thin layer of Yamabon to seal these cases when they go back together. With the clutch bell in, it was time to move on to the top end. And of course, I'm using a brand new 70cc reed kit from Treatland TV. The first thing I'm going to do is set the ring gap. Now that that's done, I can install the circlips on the piston and install that brand new needle bearing that'll be way better than the stock one. With 
the cylinder on and tightened down, I can now install the new Melosi reeds. Next, it's the clutch, and I'm upgrading this thing from the stock clutch pads to new claw clutch pads. These are hopefully going to allow the clutch to catch way harder, and I'm also pairing it with some new stiffer springs and a clutch brace. In order to use a clutch brace, you actually need to grind down these pins and drill and tap them. And with the new springs installed, the clutch is now done and ready to be thrown in the engine. And now the last major component to install is the ignition. So the engine's done, and it's time to move back to the frame to get this thing cleaned up and ready for this brand new shiny engine. I'm still amazed at how good this stock paint looks from 1980. It's such a cool color, and it just shines in the light. So I'm going to start building up the frame with the biggest upgrade it's getting in this video, which is actually the steering stem bearings. The stock bearings use this thin metal cup and these open rolling bearings, which I'm sure you can tell by looking at them, aren't the best. So I'm installing new cups with modern bearings that are going to be way better for the steering and control of this moped. So this one actually has like a little cutout right here for this little notch. I don't know what that notch is for, but you definitely gotta line this up with it so it goes in all the way. We gotta pay attention to that. Yeah, this one went in way easier. Oh yeah, just like that. In there, let's go. Hopefully nothing cracked or broke, that'd be sad.
And one of the best parts about tearing down a bike and rebuilding it is you can thoroughly clean all the parts and make them look fresh for when you put them back on the bike. Look at that thing, man. The engine is complete, timed, clutch is on, kickstarter's on, carb is clean. I mean, <laughs> I think it's ready for the first start. That's exciting. Let's get it on the frame first. It's crazy it's gonna be going in the bike and then, yeah, I guess we could see what's, what's going on after that. Looking good, brother. Here we go, I guess. Engine going in. We'll see how this goes. Get that bottom one in. All the way through. There you go. Now you swivel it up to get this top one in. Nice. And then the third one. Nice. Look at that. Engine is in. Tighten these bad boys up. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the exhaust on. I know it's ugly, I know it's rusty. Before I'm done with this, I'm definitely gonna pull this back off and clean it up completely, make it look brand new. But for now, it'll do just to make sure that this thing runs. And the last step is I needed to hook up the carburetor, the throttle, and a couple remaining components to make sure this thing can start. I'm a little nervous. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it's loud. Oh, bruh. Oh, it sounds mean. Sounds crispy, man.